Welcome to Pharmacy Accounting Basics. My name is Joey Mattingly. Today we're going to be talking about the income statement. Our learning objectives for this video are to define revenues and expenses and explain their relationship to your company's gains and losses. We also want to be able to describe the differences between gross profit, EBITDA, and net income. Finally, we want to be able to explain why businesses often use EBITDA for comparisons with other companies. So first, what is revenue? The Financial Accounting Standards Board defines revenues as inflows or other enhancements of your assets from delivering goods or rendering services or other activities. So try to explain that in your own words. It's basically, what's the, it's the money or the financial benefit that you get. Those We talked about it earlier in the, in the video on balance sheets in terms of assets. It could be cash. It could be something else that has some, some monetary value, right? So it's that inflow. What did you actually get? based on what you did. And then, so how do they define expenses? So as you can imagine, if revenues are the inflows, then expenses make up the outflows. So the outflows or other using up of your assets in, uh, from delivering goods, rendering services, or other activities. So whatever you did to gain those inflows, what did you actually do? You know, what, what, what cost occurred to you uh, to render those services? So how does it relate to gains and losses, or what, what do we mean by gains and losses, or at least the way FASB defines it? So when we think of gains, that are what are the increases in equity? Oh, so what's equity? Well, so you have to go back to the other video to talk about equity. Where does equity come from? So we think about gains are actual increases in equity, and losses are the decreases in equity that a business might, might face. So let's get a little bit more specific. So when we talk, in the balance sheet, we talked about the accounting period and assuming that it was just a one-year accounting period from January 1st to December 31st. Now, a major difference between a balance sheet and an income statement is that you'll see a balance sheet recorded as of, you know, like on the day, December 31st. So at the end of the period, you know, what is everything worth? Whereas an income statement represents everything that happens between January 1 and December 31st, so the full period or you know, you're recording over the whole period. So our top line, and a lot of times you'll hear, um, you'll hear folks say something like top line, top line revenue. Well, they're talking about the very first line of your operating statement. So when they say top line, it means the literal top line. So top line revenue, uh, often called sales, but for our class we'll say revenue. Uh, in, in this basic example, say it's a million bucks. The very next thing that often gets recorded in a business that's, uh, you know, providing uh, providing goods and services is that they've had some type of good that was sold and so we call that the cost of goods sold or COGS C-O-G-S that's a very common acronym and you will want to know that so we have say a million bucks in sales or revenue and six hundred thousand dollars in cost of goods sold so that gives us a gross profit and this is often written as gross margin for this class we'll always refer to it as gross profit so we'll make a gross profit of four hundred thousand dollars but we're not done yet, right? So we, in the case of a pharmacy, our revenue is going to refer to the money we make from, say, selling the prescriptions. The cost of goods sold is going to be attributed to the costs that go into the prescriptions that you sold. So maybe it's a combination of the cost for the drug and maybe some additional dispensing costs that went into it. Maybe, the, maybe you put in the cost of the vial or label. Now, you may or may not record that there. A lot of times pharmacies will just record the cost of goods sold, the cost of the drug itself in the COGS, and then they'll put other things like labels and supplies, they'll put that down on operating expenses. But well, you know, now we're just getting into some details. But just keep that in mind when you think about your accounting, is that you're not done when you get to gross profit. Gross profit doesn't take into account your operating expenses. So what did you pay your pharmacist? What did you pay your technicians? What did you pay for your building and rent or your uh, lease, your lease, your mortgage? Um, what were your utilities like? What was uh, the insurance payment like for you know your liability and other you know property insurances? So maybe you total out your operating expenses. And maybe in this period they equal two hundred thousand dollars. Oh, uh, one thing I might be skipping over is uh, often in accounting, rather than seeing like a negative, like a minus sign, the negative numbers are often represented by parentheses. Uh, or you'll sometimes see them, uh, not only parentheses, but maybe they'll also be printed parentheses and in red, you know, to, to, and so you'll see red. So often you'll hear businesses talk about being in the red versus being in the black. That's typically talking about a negative versus a positive. 
Um, but I, you know, so I typically will use the parentheses uh, for consistency. So say we have our, uh, we, you know, we've gotten all the way down to our total operating expenses. So now we have another number that comes up and this is one, and if you've never had accounting before, this is probably the first time you're hearing of something like this, uh, the term EBITDA, E-B-I-T-D-A, or uh, again, we often, um, business folks will, will, you know, say it like EBITDA, that's something I've always said. So this is just referring to the, our earnings before interest, tax, depreciation, and amortization. So um, this is essentially what is our operating profit, if you will. So is another maybe lay term for it, for that phrase. So this says that, okay, we sold a bunch of prescriptions, we paid our pharmacists, paid our technicians, paid all of our bills, and now we got this amount of money. This is sort of a closer to a bottom line profit, if you will, or again, operating profits, so your operations are paid, but you're not done. From an accounting standpoint, you may have interest on loans that you need to pay. You may have depreciation uh, on the buildings that you need to take. You may have other amortization expenses. And so what that does is that reduces that operating profit and then, and then you start to calculate whatever taxes you owe. So as you can tell, this, this is more accounting. This is less about your operations. This is more about accounting. So what I would want you all to remember is that that EBITDA number is a great way for us to compare how you are effectively or how, you, how you're operating your pharmacy from an efficiency standpoint. We want to compare EBITDA. We don't, you know, if we, if we compare the net income, which is our bottom line, you know, so literally at the bottom of the page, that's net. That's after all. You've taken the account for all the other fancy accounting things that go into go into it. And so maybe you made 100k off of a million bucks in revenue. So 10% uh, net income, which would be pretty good for a pharmacy. But really, your operating income is the one that you know as you as you watch that. Because see, sometimes you can't control what taxes get thrown on you. Like so, maybe you're running, you've run your pharmacy for 20 years, and uh, new po uh, politicians come into office and they raise your taxes, right? Maybe they raise your you know, or lower your taxes. Well, you don't want to falsely think that you're more efficient because you got a tax break that year, right? Like you really want to be able to evaluate your operations. On your operations, okay. So you want to you want to look at that EBITDA, uh, and again, comparing gross profit, EBITDA, net income. They're they're very valuable numbers, but valuable for different things. Let's take a quick look at Walgreens again. And again, I'm not picking Walgreens over CVS or anything over for any reason. I just happened to the, their their balance sheet was easier to navigate. Um, CVS owns a large uh, uh, payer as well. Uh, the, the you know CVS Caremark merger means they also have a big PBM, and it just their numbers are a little bit messier in my opinion than uh, trying to look at Walgreens as 10K. So anyway, this was their um, 2019 annual report. And I scrolled down to the income statement. And if you go to the balance sheet video, you'll see I did the same thing, pulled up the balance sheet. Um, so here we see uh, 2019, their sales. Now, you know, I said that we're going to use revenue in our in our um, class, but, you know, they, they use sales and cost of sales, not cost of goods sold, uh, like, like I use in my example. So they did sales, cost of sales, and then yielded gross profit, right? So then you see they sold... 136 billion dollars worth of sales and worth of you know goods and services. Those uh, sales cost them 106 billion, giving them a, a gross profit of 30 billion dollars. You think, oh wow, okay, 30 billion. Uh, you know, uh, what a little bit less than 30 percent, maybe 25 percent or something on that number. Um, so you're thinking, all right, great. Well. Uh, well, what else we got? Well, now we have this this uh, other operating expenses because they, you know, again, they're not done there, right? So you kind of keep going down the the operating statement. So they had selling general administrative expenses. So you can think of this as all the advertising and uh, the corporate other corporate expenses. I mean, you've got um, a lot of people that don't work in the pharmacy that work throughout the 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 company. Um, so, so these all kind of get spread out. Uh, so even though an individual store could be profitable, um, you know, once you tack on all the other, uh, costs so that SG and a can get kind of, uh, a lot of things get thrown in there. So they pull out what they're calling their operating income. And then they show some other income that they made, you know, not just, you know, you think not much, right? 233, well, that's 233 million. So they, you know, 233 million in other income. So you don't want to, you know, just uh, ignore $233 million. But it takes their 
earnings before interest and income tax provision. So that's close to that EBITDA that we're talking about um, to you know 5.2 billion. So now you look at that number, think, all right, well, 5.2 billion on, go back to your top line sales, 136 billion. So you know you can kind of get an idea where they are uh, percentage wise uh, compared to previous years. So if you like glance back the year prior, 2018, they made 6.5 billion on fewer sales. So you know if you're comparing year to year, you might say 2019 wasn't as good uh, proportionally as 2018, you know, because they their earnings were higher uh, for their total sales that they had. So anyway, just keep on rolling down, and they you know pay income taxes and their net earnings. So they prefer after they take out you know they mess with taxes, you know their net earnings, uh, 3.9 billion. Uh, and, and so kind of what's recorded, right? And then, then what you often see with these big companies is because they have different shares, uh, that, you know, several, you know, a lot of shares that go out, you know, if you, if you were to buy stocks for your stock account or whatever, uh, you would actually be an owner and you would say, okay, what is the earnings per share? So then you can see based on, uh, you know, about four or $4 or so a share, um, is what, what they would have made that year. So earning, you know, earning, or if you had a share of Walgreens stock, uh, you know, that's how you might look at that. All right. So, you know, we talked about the income statement. We kind of walked from top line to bottom line and talked a little bit about uh, revenues and expenses. So one of the things I, I want to bring up is, is I want, at least I want to give you a few more questions to think about. And I'm not going to answer in this video, but maybe we'll talk about in class and uh, maybe continue the conversation online. Uh, what are when, if I were to ask you, are businesses taxed differently than individuals? So, you know, obviously, if it was a yes/no question. That might be easy, but think about how, how if they are, how are they taxed uh, differently than individuals? And if they're not, well, you know, why? So, you know, how how would you justify that they they are taxed the same? Um, and then, if I were to ask you, which is bigger, you know, revenue or gross profit, or you know, true or false, revenue is larger than gross profit, how do you answer, right? So same same thing for which is bigger, is gross pro profit bigger than net income? So like, uh, and again, this is where remembering where things are in in order of the of the income statement, you know, from top to bottom. And then last but not least, um, how can you increase the gains? So remember we talked about gains, gains and increases in your equity. How can you increase gains without increasing your income. All right, so I'll leave you with some of those questions and hopefully uh, we'll get a chance to have some good discussion in class. And uh, if you have any questions before class, feel, feel free to shoot me an email or um, public questions. You can comment down below or uh, engage on Twitter as well.